people come to Benares to die. Death here means liberation, the end of a journey of many lifetimes. In a world where salvation only comes after the labor of thousands of reincarnations, merely dying in Benares ensures instant release from the cycle of rebirth forever. perhaps the world's oldest living city, Benares existed long before the birth of Christ or the beginnings of Greek civilization. For over 2,000 years, pilgrims from all over India have been coming here to bathe in the Ganges from the Ghats, the long flights of stone steps that lead down to the river. Bathing in the Ganges washes away sin and purifies the soul. The river is known as Ganga Mai, Mother Ganga. Even when many miles from her banks, just to repeat her name can atone for the sins of three previous incarnations. But nothing, however, is more beneficial than the daily bath in the river. The daily bath gives you mental peace, a mental rest. And people are not buried with all these worldly affairs and they start their everyday morning work after their bath. Main aim of the Indian person is not the pleasant life that they are doing here, but it, the main aim is after death, to get moksha or independence. They are not to come again to this human life, because to come so many times to the human life, they take it very troublesome. So they want to get rid of this circle. So this river, or this city, if a person dies here, it's said to be that he is put in the heaven and he is not to come back to this earth again. So that's the main aim. Main aim is, according to the Indian mythology, is not to be happy on this earth, but the main aim is to be happy above the earth. Benares was created at the very beginning of time, when no other place on earth existed and the Ganges still flowed only across the heavens. It is the place where the whole creation came forth and the place where it will return at the end of time.
While the Greek and Roman civilizations have long since disappeared, Bernardus has maintained the same ideas and values that were held thousands of years ago. The city has never been an important political center or the seat of power. What has ensured its survival over the changing fortunes of 2,500 years of history is the central position it holds in the Hindu faith. Benares is the city of Lord Shiva, god of destruction and creation. There are thousands of shrines and temples dedicated to him in Benares. It is mainly due to his presence here that the city enjoys such prestige. For in Benares, he grants release from the endless cycle of death and rebirth. <laughs> The city is known by many names, Varanasi, its official name, Banaris, which is a corruption of Varanasi, and Kashi, its spiritual name. It was Shiva who first noticed Banaris' enchanting qualities. After marrying the beautiful Pavarti, daughter of the Himalayas, he needed to find a place for them both to live. Scanning the entire world from the top of the Himalayas, he chose Benares for their home, as it was the most dazzling place on earth. Today, many pilgrims come to Benares for much the same reasons that Shiva did. One of the most popular pilgrimages is the Panchatirti. Along this route, pilgrims travel the entire length of the city by the banks of the Ganges, stopping at the most sacred ghats along the way. The pilgrimage begins with the ritual shaving of hair before setting off for Asi Ghat. Those places that are particularly favorable to bathe, die, make pilgrimages to, or to just live in, are called Tirthas. Tirthas are places where the membrane between this world and the next is almost transparent. They are doorways between heaven and earth, where a passage to the next world is easily made and prayers are more likely to be heard. There are thousands of Tirthas in India, the greatest being the seven sacred cities, and Banaras is the most acclaimed of these. Banaras concentrates the light of all the other Tirthas, making it the religious center of all India. Early remains of Banaras date back to the 9th century BC. 300 years later, it was an important enough center for the Buddha to preach his first sermon there. So many religious leaders chose Banaras to be their places, like Buddha, like two Jain pontiffs like Shankaracharya in the 8th century AD who actually revived Hinduism and in case of medieval times we have the 15th century saint poet Kabir, a rebel. The temples were just not temples in Banaras but they were storehouse of learning because the monks or the priests they were great storehouses of knowledge since, let us say, about 1780, it was the seat of East India Company power, the British rule, the beginning of the British rule, and they put many of these exiled Rajas and Nawabs in the city of Banaras. Unfortunately, we are all losing their great villas and centers, but with them came a new wave of understanding. They brought with their courts important people in every aspect of life so there is a chain of such experiences and every one of these left a mark on the life of Banaras
from the very beginning of the earth, from the very beginning of the creation, there are four divisions of the caste. All have got equal status as far as the human beings are concerned. There is no difference. According to division of labor, what is allotted to one part that is not performed by the others. Suppose learning is allotted to Brahmins and the strength and the war, uh, being warriors, these actions are allotted to Kshatriyas and the business is allotted to Vaishyas and the service allotted to the Sudras. Without the help of all these four, no society can flourish. A sub-caste of the Sudras are the Dobies, whose task it is to do the city's washing. There are over 70 ghats along the riverfront. Most of these were built in the 17th and 18th centuries by Indian Maharajas, many of whom built palaces in the city. Each one of the ghats has its own flavor and associations. There are ghats for bathing, cremations, washing clothes, even for observing planetary movements. Before the ghats were built, the riverfront looked much as it still does at Asi. One of Shiva's wives, Durga, once dropped her sword here, carving out the Asi stream and marking it as the southernmost boundary of the city. Shiva defies all convention and is both man and woman as personified by his lingams. The lingam, or phallus, is set in a circular base symbolizing the unity of his male and female forms. The principal way of worshipping Shiva is through these lingams. Shiva's female aspects is Kali, the black goddess of destruction who wears a garland of skulls. Kali destroys all that is bad in the world. She is the most feared of all the gods. To appease Kali, pujas or religious ceremonies are performed and afterwards she is carried down to the guts where she is set adrift on the Ganges. On the far side of the river, there is a large uninhabitable sandbank. Laborers have ferried the sand across the river to the city in the same manner for thousands of years.
Benares is so pleasing that all 330 million gods are there. At one time, this proved too much of a strain, and all the gods, including Shiva, were driven back to heaven by a king of great rectitude. The Shashwamed takes its name from the legendary ten-horse sacrifice once performed here by the king to keep the gods from returning to the city. Because the ten-horse sacrifice, the most complicated and exacting ritual, was made at the Shashwamed, it is considered particularly favoured and is the most popular of all the Ghats in Banaras. Banaras is not only an attractive place for the gods to live, but also for man as well. Because salvation is guaranteed, the people of the city are said to have a more exuberant nature, and Banaras is renowned for its festivals, its food, and its intoxicants. The sweets made here are considered to be the very best. The chai, however, is like tea all over India and is made extremely sweet. Daily life is as much a part of Banaras' ancient tradition as are its rituals and beliefs. Each year after the monsoon finishes, Wrestling contests are held on the riverfront. Adding Banaras to another word gives a special connotation. When people talk of Banaras brassware, sweets or saris, something of the city's prestige is invested in the object. Most famous of all Banaras wares is its silk. In the corners of Banaras you can see still life which would be exactly the same as it was in 18th century maybe 17th century. People live that way, people behave that way, people eat that way, people think that way. 18th century Banaras, 19th century Banaras, early 20th century Banaras. So I think Banaras is a very fit place for the world to look at India. The Ganges is said to have chemical properties that purify the waste that is discharged into the river. The water is never polluted. You may preserve the water for any length of time you like without mixing any chemical. Which is that power, nobody knows. This has been examined and this, uh, the water has been examined so many times. But no chemical has been found out 
which can be said to be responsible for the purification of this water. Water is essential and necessary and it is compulsory and it gives water to the all inhabitants of northern India and it is sacred because the um, cities who are holy are situated on its bank and we perform puja and worship on the ghats and we are benefited in so many ways that we pay our respect we pay our gratitude to this river <laughs> At one time, the Ganges flowed only across the heavens, before she was persuaded by King Bahagilati to flow on earth as well. 60,000 of his ancestors had been incinerated by an angry holy man. To redeem their souls, the Ganges came down from the heavens. So that the earth was not deluged by her torrential force, she descended from the heavens by way of Shiva's hair, before making her way across the plains of India. The Hagidatti needed the water of the Ganges to perform proper funeral rites, so that his ancestors could make a smooth transition to their next life. If these rites are not performed, the souls would stay in limbo, caught between one life and the next. As the Ganges brought to life the ancestors of the Hagilati, so she eases the way for all the dead, and so making cremation along her banks very desirable. If a person is not fortunate enough to be cremated on the banks of the Ganges, their relatives may bring their ashes to Banaras and perform a puja before scattering the ashes on the river. <laughs> These rites are usually performed at Manikanika, the most sacred of all the ghats in Banaras. After burning him, I brought the ashes here to mix in the Ganga, which is a holy place here. This ceremony I can perform at, at my native place where my father expired. But since this is the holy place, and if I perform here, the soul died, who my father died, the soul will feel happy and uh, he can, he, if he any birth, he will have a good birth, again rebirth, if any birth, he will have a good birth, again birth, and his soul will be, feel happy and bless me and my family and children. People near the end of their lives often retire to Banaras in hope of gaining salvation when they die. Widows take refuge in ashrams in the city where they live out their last days devoting themselves to God. Every day there is an endless parade of bodies being carried on their final journey to the burning guts. As they make their way through the alleys, the bearers chant, God's name is truth. For it is Shiva who whispers the sacred mantra in the ear of the body as it is being burnt on the funeral pyres, giving the soul ultimate knowledge.
Because death in Benares assures salvation, life can be lived to the full. The days leading up to the full moon in November, known as Kartika, are an auspicious time to bathe at Panchganga. On the full moon itself, the festival climaxes when hundreds of thousands of people bathe from the guts all along the riverfront. Even the Maharaja of Banaras leaves his palace to bathe at Panchganga during Katika. After washing, he cruises the length of the riverfront where he is hailed by the bathers. At the other end of the social scale is the Dom Raja, who also makes a trip down the river on this day. By birth, the Dom Raja has authority over the cremation guts, which are worked by untouchables called the Doms. The Dom Raja can earn as much as 5,000 rupees from one cremation, and the burning guts work ceaselessly night and day. <coughs> Banara's ancient name, Kashi, means the city of light or illumination. It is here in the abode of Lord Shiva, on whose trident Banaras sits poised between heaven and earth, that the light shines, ensuring liberation and release from the world forever.